Hi, I'm Paul Carr, and this is the first in a series of API investigator training videos. The purpose is to create a common base of knowledge, not only within API, but to be shared with the entire independent investigator community. I hope you'll watch these videos, then give us your thoughtful comments and suggestions. To make sure you don't miss one, just click subscribe right down there, and you'll get a notification each time we put a new video out. This video is meant to serve as a short introduction to API's investigative process. We're not going to drill down into any one investigative activity. These will be the subject of future videos. Our purpose here is an overview so that we're talk all talking about the same thing when we discuss where we are in the process. I made a little simplified activity chart to model this process graphically. This chart shows a simplified flow from the beginning to the end of the case, from opening to closing. The exact flow of the process depends quite a lot on the nature of the case and the degree of witness cooperation. The event that starts the whole process is receipt of a citing report. We have another earlier video, video link below, that goes over our reporting form in detail, and every investigator needs to understand what is and isn't on the reporting form. As soon as we have the report, a case number is assigned, and the basics of the case are logged, including any photos, sketches, or videos the witness submitted with the report. A preliminary assessment of the case is made, and a decision is made about whether or not to pursue an investigation. Often, the answer is no. And then we close the case and send an email thanking the witness for the report. If we decide to proceed with the case, a lead investigator is assigned. Additional help may also be brought in, depending on the complexity of the evidence. It is a good idea at this point for the investigator to begin gathering facts that are to be had at the time of the report, as well as listing the missing facts. This will make the witness interview more productive. The investigator should have a rough plan for how the investigation is going to proceed, particularly if a site visit is contemplated. Writing down the plan in your case notes is a good practice. At about the same time, we contact the witness and set up a time for an interview. We may also ask the witness to prepare a sketch if we don't already have one and to quarantine the original files from their camera as required. If there is more than one witness, this is a good point at which to coordinate the separate interviews. Unfortunately, witnesses often decide at this phase that they don't want to proceed with an investigation and... The usual means for informing us of this is to simply cut off communication. Give the witness a reasonable amount of time, and then if multiple attempts to make contact fail, we will close the case at that point. If the witness does respond, then prepare for your interview by organizing your case-specific questions. A final decision on a site visit should be made at about this time. Site visits are often indicated, especially in close encounter cases, but are not always practical. Most interviews are over the phone or Skype and take about one hour. If the witness agrees, the interview should be recorded. There will be a fixed set of questions to ask every witness and also a number of case-specific questions. But first, we let the witness tell their story before we ask questions in order to minimize the risk of memory contamination. The witness interview or interviews will often reveal new facts or corrected facts and may also reveal inconsistencies. This is followed by an additional evidence collection, which may include such activities as contacting local law enforcement or local news media or Freedom of Information Act requests. Gather every fact you can and look hard for either corroborating or disconfirming evidence. The next step is analysis, and this complex step could easily have 20 videos explaining the various analyses performed. Analysis can be anything from ruling out various common explanations to making our best effort to understand constraints on sighting geometry. 
We also attempt to find examples of similar sightings, or sightings at about the same time. Performing the case analysis may result in finding that we need more information, so the follow-up stage may take us back to the witness or may have us consulting with experts. We sometimes determine that the information is just not available, and we need to take this into account in our assessment of the case. When we are ready to draft our report, an assessment of the case needs to be put forth by the lead investigator. How strange is the case? How credible is the witness? How probable is the sighting based upon the amount and quality of the supporting evidence? The Report of Investigation, or ROI, includes a checklist of investigative steps that may apply to the case at hand. In all cases, we need to evaluate whether the step was performed and should have been performed. We include as much of the evidence as we can in the document so that the argument that the investigator makes for their conclusion is clear and well supported. After the ROI is drafted, it is reviewed by at least one, but hopefully several other investigators, and possibly the witness as well. The peer reviewers are encouraged to find errors and holes or to take issue with conclusions. This is all done in the spirit of creating the highest quality ROI possible and should not be taken personally by anyone. We should always be trying to disprove ourselves. Following a healthy round of peer review and good-natured, if spirited, debate, the investigator will correct and finish the report for final review and case closure. A redacted version of the report for public distribution is usually prepared as well. The witnesses are then informed of our conclusions and we mark the case closed. For cases with a good amount of visual content, a video case summary may also be prepared, but this is a lower priority. We may also make an audio report for the API Case Files podcast. So that's the overview of our process. There is a link to the PDF file of this chart below. Future training videos will explore many of the steps in more detail. If your organization has a different flow, let's talk about it. As always, our videos are Creative Commons, so you should feel free to borrow this material for your own purposes, so long as you give attribution to API. There's also a link to the script below, if that would help. If this video was helpful to you, please click the thumbs up icon below. We also love helpful comments, so let us know what you think. We'll be back with more videos soon.